says, how do I describe what the Holy Spirit is to Muslims? <laughs> well, I'm laughing because the Quran confirms the Holy Spirit yeah. is God. So uh, when you say, how do you describe it? Well, typically, the Muslims believe the Holy Spirit is Gabriel. What you need to do is, and I need to nuance and qualify what I'm about to say, because obviously we don't believe the Quran is the Word of God. We don't believe that the Spirit described in the Quran is the true Holy Spirit revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. So with that ca caveat, the Quran does not teach the Quran. Let me repeat. The Quran does not teach the Holy Spirit is Angel Gabriel. The Quran acknowledges the Holy Spirit distinct from Allah, subordinate to Allah, a messenger of Allah who can appear as a man, speak and be spoken to, so he's a person who is fully God. Now, David, if you want me to give a couple of verses, that's up to you. Should I just give a couple examples from the Quran? Yeah. Where, okay, well, can you do me a favor and go to chapter 19 of the Quran, 16 to 21? Now, I got articles on this. We have videos on this. And even David in his debate with Muhammad Hijab brought this point out, but it fell on deaf ears. In chapter 19, verses 16 to 21, I want you to guys pay attention to what the Quran says about the Spirit of Allah here, 1916 to 21. And make mention of Mary in the scripture when she had withdrawn from her people to a chamber looking east and had chosen seclusion from them. Then we sent unto her our spirit. And, it and by the way, hmm? let me just make it clear. Some translations like Yusuf Ali will say angel. The word angel is not in the Arabic. The mm -hmm. word is ruh. Mm -hmm. Ruh. Our spirit. So Allah sent his spirit to Mary. And what appearance did the spirit take? Then we sent unto her our spirit, and it assumed for her the likeness of a perfect man. She said, Lo, I seek refuge in the Beneficent One from thee, if thou art God-fearing. He said, I am only a messenger of thy Lord, that I may bestow on thee a faultless son. You can pause right there. Notice for 19, folks. I want you guys to pay attention. Guys, do me a favor. No sight chatting, debating about Catholicism or Orthodoxy or Protestantism, because I see that you guys are now engaging in those kind of discussions. Let's keep it relevant, Christianity and Islam. Notice what 1919 said. The Spirit says to Mary, I'm only a Rasul, messenger of your Lord. So he's a Rasul, so he's a messenger. So he's subject, subordinate to Allah. Notice he appeared as a man, a perfect-looking man. Notice that he's engaging in conversation, so he's personal. He's not simply an active force. But then he says something amazing. I'm only a messenger of, of thy Lord, sent to bestow on you, to give you a faultless son. So Allah sent the Spirit to cause Mary to conceive and bear life in her womb as a virgin, showing the Spirit is creator and life giver. This is further confirmed in 15, 20 to 29. We'll look at just two more, 15, 20 to 29. So I can spend hours discussing what the Quran, what the New Testament, what the Old Testament teach about the Holy Spirit. And Old, New Testaments, and the Quran all agree Allah's Spirit, which they believe is the true God of the Bible. He's not. The Holy Spirit is a divine person, distinct from God, subordinate to God, but nonetheless equal to God in essence. All three books affirm this, by the way, which is astonishing. Mm -hmm. Even though the Quran is not the word of God and it's a counterfeit spirit, a counterfeit Jesus, a counterfeit deity. But in fifteen twenty to 29, notice what it says. And remember when your Lord said to the angels, Lo, I am creating a mortal out of potter's clay of black mud altered. So when I have made him and have breathed into him of my spirit, fall down prostrating yourselves unto him. Note two things. My spirit, so there's a distinction. And secondly, Allah breathes his spirit out of himself. Now, the question is, why is Allah breathing his spirit into Adam? Well, this is echoing the biblical account of creation. The spirit is going to animate Adam, make him a, making him a living being. So notice again, when Allah wants to create and give life, he sends the spirit to do so. So the spirit is creator and life giver. And Allah breathes the spirit out. If the spirit is breathed out by Allah, that means the spirit originates from Allah that means the Spirit is part of Allah. He's not part of creation. So if the Spirit is part of Allah, that means He's always existed. And yet He's distinct from Allah. And yet He creates and gives life. What else do you need to demonstrate to the Muslim that the Spirit is creator, life giver, and therefore fully divine? 
You have to speak distinct from Allah, inseparable from him, who is a person that it can appear as a man. Now, that raises another question. Why can the spirit appear as a man, but Allah can't do so? Mm-hmm. Is the spirit mightier than Allah? Or does the Muslim really want to say, for Allah to appear as a man would be beneath him? So are you saying that Allah's own spirit that originates from him, inseparable from him, did something inglorious beneath the majesty of Allah? You sure you want to go that route? Mm-hmm. I hope that answered the question. If you want to add something, David, go ahead. Nope, that's good.